we're going to be looking at force and acceleration and in particular the equation f equals ma and we'll also be looking at the concept of weight when a resultant force acts on an object and a resultant force is also known as a net force so that is a for an overall force which is non-zero well that resultant force produces an acceleration on that object and that acceleration is in the same direction as the resultant force and we could say resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration and this symbol equation is f equals ma it's important to note that the f represents the resultant force and not just force for the force to be in newtons then the mass needs to be in its si units of kg and acceleration in its si units of meters second squared and we can use this equation to define the unit the newton so one newton is equal to the unit of mass which is kg multiplied by the unit of acceleration which is meters per second squared so one newton equals one kg meters per second squared and one newton is then defined as the force that gives a mass of one kg an acceleration of one meter second squared to determine the acceleration of the car shown in the diagram below we first need to know the resultant force that is acting on the car so we've got 1700 newtons acting to the left and 200 newtons acting to the right so the resultant force will be 1500 newtons to the left and so that tells us then, as from f equals ma, we know that the acceleration will be in the same direction as the resultant force. So the acceleration will be to the left. And we can say it will be equal to our resultant force divided by the mass. And the mass of the object being 1000 kg. So it will be... 1500 newtons, the resultant force divided by the mass of 1000 kgs, and that will give you an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared, acting as I said to the left. When the resultant force is zero or the overall force is zero, so for example, the forces acting on the car are balanced, so they are in equal in size but opposite in direction. Then we can say from f equals ma if the resultant force is zero then that means the acceleration will be zero so if the object is not accelerating it is either stationary at rest or it's moving at a constant velocity so to summarize if you have a non-zero resultant force then the object will be accelerating in the same direction as the resultant force but if the resultant force is zero then the acceleration will be zero the f equals ma equation is only valid when mass of the object is constant and according to einstein's special theory of relativity if the object is moving at very high speeds so that is speeds close to the speed of light and the speed of light being equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second then the mass of that object increases with speed so at very high speeds the mass of the object is not constant and so f equals ma no longer applies however for very low speeds, and generally in our everyday lives, objects are moving at speeds much, much less than the speed of light. The mass of the object is constant, and so we can then use F equals ma. Weight is the force due to gravity that acts on an object.
So it's important that weight is a force, it is not mass. How we find the weight of the object is we can use the equation resultant force equals mass times acceleration, but our force is representing the weight, the force of gravity, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration of free fall. So our value of g, which near the Earth's surface is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's important to know weight is a force and so it will be measured in newtons and for weight to be measured in newtons the mass will need to be in kgs and our acceleration of free fall g will need to be in meters per second squared. We're now going to apply F equals ma to these three situations. The first situation is a bucket that is accelerating upwards. So the two forces acting on the bucket will be its weight, which is acting downwards. And remember, its weight will equal the mass times the acceleration of free fall. So its weight equals mg. We also have an upward force, which is the tension force acting on the handles. If the bucket is accelerating upwards, then the resultant force needs to be acting upwards. And so the tension force must be greater than the weight. So we can then say our resultant force will be T minus mg, tension minus the weight which will give you an overall upward force. And using F equals MA, we can say then our resultant force is equal to MA. If we rearrange this equation to make T the subject, then T will equal the weight plus MA. If we now consider the case when the bucket is moving at a constant velocity. Remember, if it's moving at a constant velocity, it is not accelerating, and so the resultant force is zero. So we can say the tension will equal the weight. And this would be true if the bucket was moving upwards at a constant velocity or downwards at a constant velocity. Because it's not accelerating, the tension will equal the weight for the resultant force to be zero. In the third case, the bucket is accelerating downwards. And so the resultant force must be downwards. And so... The downward force has to be greater than the upward force, so our weight must be greater than the tension. And so we'd say our resultant force is the weight minus tension, and that will equal MA. And if we rearrange the equation to make T the subject, then the tension will equal the weight minus MA. So you can see, when the bucket is accelerating upwards, the tension is going to be maximum because the tension is working against the weight to provide the resultant force so it can accelerate upwards. And for when the bucket is accelerating downwards, then the tension is minimum, and that's because it doesn't have to overcome the weight to provide a resultant force. And so that's why when you are accelerating a bucket upward, it's going to be, feel harder because you have to provide more tension in the handles as opposed to when the bucket is accelerating downwards.